Hello kids. Okay, so today I'm going to do a seahorse. I'm going to start in pencil. I'm going to adjust my lines, erase a lot, make a bunch of mistakes, figure out what lines I want to keep, and then go over them in Sharpie. I'm holding my paper uh, horizontal landscape only because the video looks better that way. Um, the seahorse is kind of a vertical critter, right? It's taller than it is wide. So if you want to hold your paper portrait, that's fine. I'm going to start with laying out some basic shapes. So I'm going to start with the head, which is sort of like an egg. And then the body, which is sort of like a bean kind of got a wide like a big belly here and then this shape notice I'm using the side of my pencil it helps a lot when you go to erase because you don't have any harsh indentations into the paper okay now I'm gonna give the seahorse that that nose you know they have that long snouty nose thing and it's got a little crest up here. We'll put that in. It's got some lines here for that fin. And then we can connect the head. I'm going to go out. Go out. And then tuck back in with a big sway line because there's sort of an, like an an S curve, like a, I realize an S goes this way, but they're curved. And then we can kind of go under here and come into there. All right. That's going to come down here. Now, they're also segmented. They have these like linear plane changes across their body. And we're going to put some of those in and they're going to come down into the tail. So the first one I'm going to put in is one that's going to come from under here, under the neck, down through the body and out. The next one is going to come from back here behind the head, down through the body and around. And we can connect that to there. And then this one from here, and that can touch there. Now the front of the belly can touch there. And then we can bring these around for that curl of the tail. So you have a real curly tail to hold on to plants and things like that. All right, now when you go to do the segments, you're going to connect these across these lines. So you want to kind of be able to see them and you want to know where they are. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. All right, so let's put in this fin in the back, that kind of basic shape there. And its body comes down in front of the fin, so let's put that there. And its eye is going to go here. Okay, now for these segments, you want to think about this as being a section, this as being a section, this as a section, and this as a section. So let's do this one first because it's the biggest and it'll be easiest to see. So you want to bring a line from here to here, and then here to here, here to here. It does not have to be the same number of lines that I'm making. But you want them 
kind of evenly spaced and relatively parallel. Even though mine are slightly shifting with the angle of the seahorse. So if its body's curving this way, the lines are going to kind of angle that way. But when the tail curls that way, the lines will start to come in like this. And actually, you know what? I think I want this to be two different sections. So I'm going to bring this here. Oh, my cat. Oh, my cat. Come here, honey. Oh, gosh, you're so good. You want to look out the window? Hold on, folks. I gotta open up the window. And let my cat see out. Okay, I'm back. So, sorry about that, but if I don't, like, let the cat look out the window, she'll crawl all over my paper. Oh, she's coming. There she is. <gasps> Lydia, honestly, come here. Goodness gracious. Mm -mm. So now you want to think about these here. These lines curling this way now and they're going to come down just this one segment. And I think I'm going to make them stop here. All right, so now the next section is going to touch these, but they're going to change their angle. So this is going to angle back a little bit more because the seahorse is, well, it's weird and it's angled, but it's still kind of rounded. So these are going to work its way towards the back spine. And then here, they're also going to touch, but they're going to work their way towards the front belly. See what I'm talking about? See what I'm like up against? You know what I mean? Oh, kids, this is perseverance. Just making this video regardless. All right, now we'll put these in. And these are this section, so now we can come down here into this part of the tail and make those lines. And then we can do the front. Okay. So once we're done adding the eye, we have a little fin here, a little jaw area there, and a spiky line that we're going to put in down the back. We can start working through here. So I'm going to do the outline in Sharpie, and then I'll go over the center. So here's the nose. They have a jagged line here. They're a very like spiky little little thing. So you can kind of make this jagged line the whole way down. And then you can bring this the whole way around the tail until it does sort of flatten out towards the very end of the tail, but this can come all the way down here. And then we'll put this part in. And 
and use a jagged line here. And notice I'm not making like big zigzags, I'm just giving it a little bit of texture. All the way to there. Okay. Olivia, you are making me insane. Yeah. All right, let's put in the eye. Let's put in this fin. Okay, now, at every place where these lines met up on one of these vertical lines, I'm going to put a small shape like this for like the representation of a little knob or like protruding little spiky part on the body. So if this line touched here and here, I'm going to put one there along this line. This is also going to help you to keep your lines straight. So when you go to Sharpie them, you really know where they are. Those two didn't really match up. And now here, right, if this and this touch here, that's where it goes. It goes at the intersection of the lines. Let's do that one. And then we'll put in this fin. which has a little bit of this. And a little bit of that. And I actually think it might have more texture across it, so I'll put that there. Okay, so before I erase my pencil lines, I want to commit to some of these lines. So this, 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 and this all get a line. What I am doing is I'm not making like a heavy pressed line with the Sharpie. I'm kind of just grazing along with the Sharpie so that my line is like relatively light. I know it's hard with a Sharpie to make a light line, but I'm doing the most gentle pressure. You can do the same thing with a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, but you really don't want a whole lot of line on this because it doesn't really have lines on it. If you've had my class before, you've probably heard me explain that lines are a man-made thing and they don't exist in nature and the seahorse is no different. You give it a lot li an outline because it's easier to see and draw that way, but it doesn't really have an outline. Okay, that's kind of cute. I think it's going to need a little bit more something in here, something there, a little texture there, and. I'm going to put in a little bit more of that there. And now let's erase and see if it looks okay. Oh, I really like it, and I think the purple was a good choice.
So now, of course, you can do anything you want with your seahorse, a fun little underwater environment. Maybe it has some seahorse friends, or maybe it's the daddy and it has babies, right? So, all right, kids, enjoy.